Morning colleagues, um, I'll be chairing this session. As mentioned, my name is Patience Isereko from NEMA. And uh, without much ado, I would like to invite uh, the first speaker who will give us an address. Uh, His Excellency Patrick Edwards, uh, High Commissioner from the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So, Mr. Edwards, you're welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am indeed pleased that I have been given this opportunity to make a presentation. But I regret I have to begin with a word of caution. In fact, the invitation to deliver this paper was really passed on to someone from our Ministry of Energy who was started to arrive here to deliver the paper. But unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, he couldn't turn up. So I have been landed with responsibility to deliver a paper on his behalf. So I thought I should give just a slight word of caution since my forte is not in oil and gas, but in the other realms of diplomacy. Nevertheless, I would um, seek to do justice to the paper which was passed on to me not too long ago. My topic this morning, well, ladies and gentlemen, is environmental management in the oil and gas sector in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, some of you, many of you will know that Trinidad and Tobago has been in oil and gas for over 160 or more years. In fact, we are the only oil producing country in the world and have been involved in commercial oil production since 1908. And we are also equally strong in in gas production. In fact, of late we are doing more in the field of gas than in oil. Our oil reserves have been almost reached depletion point. Nevertheless, we look at this morning at the environmental management in the petroleum sector in Trinidad and Tobago. And we look in my presentation, therefore, will concentrate in the following areas. Environmental management, the impact, its impact on the atmosphere, aquatic impact, terrestrial impact, waste management and disposal techniques, ecosystem impact, environmental impact management, impact driven fluids disposal, environmental policies of the government of Trinidad and Tobago, and we conclude. Oil and gas exploration, ladies and gentlemen, and production operations have the potential for a variety of impacts on the environment. These impacts depend on the stage of the process, the size and complexity of the project, the nature and sensitivity of the surrounding environment, the effectiveness of planning, pollution prevention, migration, and control techniques. Atmospheric impact. To understand the environmental impacts that, that arises from exploration and production operations, one must first understand the sources and nature of the emissions and their relative contribution to atmospheric impacts, both local and those related to the global issues such as stratospheric, ozone depletion, and climate change. The primary sources of atmospheric emission from oil and gas operations arises from the following. Flaring, venting, and purging gases, combustion processes such as diesel engine and gas turbines, 
fugitive gases from loading operations and tankage, and losses from processed equipment, airborne particulates from soil disturbances during construction and from vehicle traffic, and particulates from other burning sources such as testing. The main emission gases include carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, volatile organic compounds, and nitrogen oxide. The emissions of sulfur dioxide and hydro hydrogen sulfur, sulfide can also occur. They depend on the sulfur content of the hydrocarbon and the diesel fuel spe specifically when used as a power source. The volume of atmospheric emissions and their potential impacts depend on the nature of the processes under consideration. The potential for e of emissions from explosion activity from exploration activities to cause atmospheric impacts is generally considered to be low. During the production process, where there is intense activity, increased levels of emission can occur in the immediate vicinity of the operation. Flaring of produced gas is the most significant source of air emission, especially where there is no infrastructure infrastructure or, mar or market available for the gas. Where feasible and viable, the gas can be processed and distributed as an important commodity. Flaring, venting, and combustion are the primary sources of carbon dioxide emission from production operation, but consideration needs to be given to other gases. For instance, Methane emissions primarily arises from process, from process vents and to a lesser extent from leaks, flaring, and combustion. Other emission gases such as nitrogen oxide, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide contribute to less than 1% of the emissions generated within the European Union and the volatile organic compound levels are the only exceptions, but they account for far less than 2% of the total EU emissions. The reduction of emission has been achieved through the reduction of flaring and venting, improving energy efficiency, development of low nitrogen oxide, turbines, and controlling figurative emissions. But let us look at aquatic impact. The main aqueous stream resulting from exploration and production operations are produced water, drilling fuels, cutting and well treatment chemicals, processes, wash and drainage water, sewage, sanitary and domestic washes, spills and leakages, and cooling water. Again, the volume of waste produced depends on the stage of exploration and production processes. In exploratory drilling, the main aqueous effluents are drilling fluids and cutting. The primary effluent in production operation is produced water. Most water-based drilling fluids have minimal effects on the environment since the major components are clay and bentonite, which are chemically inert and non-toxic. Heavy metal associated with drilling fluids, such as barium, <coughs> zinc, lead, have been shown to have continued have been shown to have minimal impact, and since the metals are bound in minerals and hence have limited bioavailability. Oil-based drilling fluids and only cuttings have increased impact, have increased impact due to toxicity and redox impacts. Ocean-based discharges of water-based mud and cutting have been shown to affect bentonite organ organisms through smoldering of up to a distance of 25 meters from the discharge and to affect species diversity in to 100 meters from the discharge. The physical effects of water-based muds and cuttings are often temporary in nature. Work is underway to develop synthesis muds to eventually replace oil-based muds. The high acidity and soil content of certain drilling fluids and, cutting, and cuttings pose a potential impact to freshwater sources. 
produce water is to, large, is to the large extent, is to the largest volume of aqueous waste arising from production operations, and some typical constituents may include in varying amounts inorganic salt, heavy metals, solids, production chemicals, hydrocarbon, benzene, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and occasion naturally occurring radioactive materials. The nature of the impact arising from produced water is highly dependent on the, on the quantity, the components, the receiving environment, and its dispersion characteristics. Exposure to small streams and enclosed water bodies is likely to require special care. Produced water volumes vary within the type of production of oil and gas, and aqueous waste, aqueous waste streams such as leakage and discharge of drainage waters may result in pollution of ground and surface water. Impacts result particularly where ground and surface waters are affected. Indirect or secondary effects on local drainage patterns and surface hydrology may result from poor construction practices in the development of roads, drillings, and process sites. Let us therefore look at terrestrial impacts. Potential impacts to soil arises from, from three basic sources. Physical disturbances as a result of construction. Containment resulting from spillage and leakage of solid waste disposal, and indirect impact arising from opening access and social change. Once left undisturbed and vegetated, soils will maintain their integrity, but one, ve but one vegetation is removed and soil is exposed, soil erosion may result. Alterations to conditions may result in widespread secondary impacts such as change, such as changes in the surface hydrology, draining and drainage patterns, increased sedimentation and habitat damage, reducing the capacity of the environment to support vegetation and wildlife. The removal of vegetation may also lead to secondary ecological problems, especially in areas where many of the nutrients in the areas held in vegetation such as tropical rainforests, or where a few trees present are vital for wildlife browsing, example, tree savanna, or in areas where natural recovery is very slow, as in the Arctic and desert system. The burial or landfill system of waste in pits at drilling and production sites has been a popular means of waste disposal in the past due to, its, due to its simplicity. Pits have previously been used for the burial of inert, non-recyclable material in drilling solids, evaporation and storage of produced water, workover, completion fluids, emergency containment of produced fluids, and the disposal of stabilized waste. These risks associated with pollutants, migration pathways, can damage soils and usable water resources, both surface and groundwater, if seepage and, and leachages are not contained, and leakages are not contained. There are potential inputs, impacts, sorry, where toxic concentrations of constituents may contaminate the soil or water resources is an exposure pathway, if an exposure pathway is present. In the present case, in the case of mud and cotton, the most important consideration is the potential for the waste to have a high salt content. Arid regions are more prone to adverse effects as the alkaline soil, or those with a high clay density in comparison to acid, highly organic, or sandy soil. Land farming and land spreading can be viable and cost-effective options for treatment and waste disposal once a proper assessment is carried out, feasible engineering designs are determined, and operations and monitoring are conducted. Soil contamination may arise from spills and leakage of chemicals and oil cuttings in possible, in possible impact to both, and possible impact to both flora and fauna. Preventative techniques, 
such as segregated and contained drainage systems for processes, areas incorporating sumps and oil traps, leak minimization, drip band, should be incorporated into facility design and maintenance procedures. These techniques, these techniques will certainly eliminate any potential impact arising from small spills and leakages on the site. Large incidents or spills off-site or spills off-site should be subject to assessment as potential emergency events. Amount of the ecosystem impact. Plants and animals, communities may be directly affected by changes in their environment through variations in water, air and soil sediments, quality, through disturbance by noise, extraneous light, and changes in vegetation cover. These changes may directly affect the ecology, such as habitat, food and nutrient supplements, breeding areas, migration, routes, Vulnerability to predators or changes in behavioral gazing patterns. Habivoral, sorry, habivoral gazing patterns. Soil disturbance and removal of vegetation and secondary effects such as erosion and, and siltation may have an impact on ecological integrity and may lead to indirect effects by upsetting nutrient balances and, micro and microbial activity in the soil. When this is not properly controlled, the potential long-term effect is loss of habitat, which affects flora and fauna, changes in species composition and production cycles. Let us look at environmental impact management. With the application of proper management techniques and best environmental practice, many potential disastrous impacts will be eliminated and mitigated. The assessment of potential impacts and management measures is commonly carried out through an environmental assessment, either independently or with health and safety management systems. The potential impact of exploration and production activities must also be considered in the context of national and global policies and legislation. The consent for major activities is based on the result of formal environmental impact assessments. One of the first steps in developing environmental protection plan is to conduct an environmental audit to identify all of the waste streams at a particular site and to determine whether these waste streams are being handled in compliance with all applicable, with all applicable regulations. Once an audit has been conducted, a written waste management plan Managing each waste stream should be conducted or developed. But there are a number of important international environmental conventions, some of which, of course, you already know the Montreal Protocol, the Brazil Convention, Convention on Migratory Species, from the Convention on Climate Change and Biodiversity Protection. Quite apart from the international conventions, however, there are a number of industry guidelines and the environment, some of which would include environmental principle objectives and general guidelines such as environmental principles, management systems, chemical usage, waste management forums, drilling mods, oil spills, decommission for, decommissioning forums. And there are a number of common legislation that may apply to oil operations such as petroleum laws, planning laws, environmental acts, environmental impact assessments, and so on. Quite apart from the legislative aspects, however, there are specific infrastructure needs to be put in place or, re or are needed for environmental protection. These would include policy formulation and regulation, baseline environmental surveys, assessment and approvals, inspection, monitoring and enforcement, services such as water, power, waste disposal, energy response, external supplies and services such as construction, material, engineering, consultants, technical services such as laboratories, laboratory supplies, equipment, training institutions and standards association. The development of oil and gas activities can be carried out safely with minimum adverse environmental impact 
through strong company commitment to environmental protection. This approach must take into consideration the following. One, it must consider all environmental components and decision making at strategic and operational levels. Two, it must methodically integrate environmental issues into business decisions through formal management systems. Three, it must integrate health, safety, and, and environmental management into a single program. Four, it should aim to prevent waste from source through pollution prevention techniques and make and make a maximum reuse of waste components. And finally, it should aim to minimize resource inputs. Let us look at waste management and disposal techniques. Water management plans identify exactly how each waste stream should be managed. They ensure that appropriate engineering controls and training, and training of employees are in place. If waste management cannot be eliminated through pollution prevention, then it must be accomplished through the application of other measures such as reduction, reuse, recycling, recovery, treatment, and responsible disposal. Area-specific waste management plans relate to the choice of waste handling and disposal options to the ecological sensitivities, regulatory requirements, and available facilities or infrastructure of the global area involved. The waste management programs, therefore, should take into consideration the following. One, protection of the environment and ongoing compliance with regulatory requirements. Training of field personnel. Suitability of the plan and the minimization of the volume and toxicity of waste. The development of waste management plans and systems are beneficial in that they ensure compliance with, with applicable environmental laws and regulations at a reasonable cost. Minimize environmental damage from operation. Minimize short and long-term liabilities and risks associated with facilities operations. Minimize operating costs through savings in raw material and production costs. Minimize personnel costs associated with waste management by having a written plan available. Minimize cost of treating and disposing of waste. Minimize employee exposure potential hazardous material. Maintain a favorable corporate image. In developing a waste management plan, the following steps should be considered. Management approval, area definition, waste identification, regulatory analysis, waste categorization, Evaluation of waste and management of disposal of, of and, and disposal options, waste minimization, selection of preferred waste management practices, implementation of an area management plan, and plan review and update. Now, what is the impact of drilling fluid disposal? Drilling fluids used for onshore wells are primarily disposed of in reserve pits. While in many drilling fluid, while in many areas drilling fluids from offshore platforms have been dumped abroad. The environmental impact of most releases of petroleum waste would be minimal if the waste remain at the points of release. Waste, however, can migrate away from the release point by a number of pathways. Such pathways include transport along the surface of the earth or along the surface of a body of water transport through soil, through the pore structure, and transport through the air. But ladies and gentlemen, one may ask, what is the policy of the government of Trinidad to be able to respect the management of the environment, having been in oil and gas for so many years? Well, the government of Trinidad and Tobago has embarked on a number of legislative measures to deal with the problems of environmental management over the years, and among some of the measures which we have taken, which we have embarked upon, and which we have policed and managed rigorously in dealing with the oil companies and other operations in Trinidad, are as follows. We have the Environmental Management Act 2000, the National Government, the National Policy on the Environment. We have a Waste Management Act, which was enacted in 2008. 
We have the Petroleum Act, which is the centerpiece of the legislation, and that in itself contains a number of subsidiary legislation, something like 10 or 15 subsidiary legislation emanating from this Petroleum Act. And then we ensure that compliance is adhered to by having what you call environment impact assessment. In other words, before an oil company, or before a ministry, or before any business embarks on disturbing the soil or construction, we require an environmental assessment impact. And this is adhered to very, very rigidly, and we have had many, many such impacts over the years before approval is given to carry on with the respective um, exploration activities. Let us look slightly at the management or Environmental Management Act of Trinidad and Tobago, and what we seek to achieve through this act. One, the aim is to promote and encourage among all personnel a better understanding and appreciation of the environment, encourage the integration of environmental concerns into private and public decisions, ensure the establishment of an integrated environmental management system in which the authority, that is the environmental authority, in consultation with other persons, determines priorities and facilities coordination among government entities to effectively harmonize and effectively implement written laws, policies, and other programs. To develop and effectively implement written laws and policies in relation to, one, the conservation and wise use of the environment, to provide adequately for meeting the needs of the present and future generation and enhancing the quality of life, and the government's commitment to achieve economic growth in accordance with sound environmental practices. And of course, the government's international obligations in this regard. And fifth, the enhance, to enhance the legal, regulatory, and institutional framework for environmental management. The development of the petroleum and petrochemical sector in our country has expanded to the extent that Trinidad and Tobago was, until very recently, until 2008 and 2009, was the largest supplier of LNG to the United States and the number one exporter of ammonia in the world. We are also the number one exporter of methanol in the world, with the largest methanol plant in the world, Titan Methanol, located in Trinidad and Tobago. These developments have given the country global recognition and attention. The government, therefore, is duty-bound to ensure that Trinidad and Tobago finds the right balance between economic development and environmental, con environmental conservation. The environmental policies, or environmental policies, therefore, call for the following. The government is seen as the government, sorry, the environment is seen as an essential pillar of the economic and social development, and consequently, environmental sustainability is a key objective of economic development planning. The environment generates both social and economic benefits for society through the supply of the following ecosystem services. Natural resources, which are the basis for economic activity. Food, fiber, fuel, plant and animal products, energy and water. Water and air purification, flood migration, generation and renewal of, and renewal of soil, aesthetic values, education and scientific values. The link between poverty reduction and hunger and environmental sustainability. The economically challenged in society have a direct dependence on the ecosystem in order to be adequately nourished and have access to clean and air water. When ecosystems are degraded, the economically challenged therefore suffer. The policy or policy therefore takes into account the relationship between environmental sustainability and human health. There has been a long stand there has been a long standing environment there has been a long standing understanding, sorry, that environmental factors such as water contamination, air pollution, hazardous waste, climate change are root causes of of diseases, disability, and of infrequently death. Promoting environmental enhancements in the form of reforestation, coastal protection, and wetland conservation can serve to protect the country from storm surges during hurricanes, and we live in the hurricane belt, store water, reduce flooding, wind damage, and absorb greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide. 
The objective of this policy, therefore, is to prevent, reduce, prevent, reduce where possible, recycle or recycle all forms of pollution to ensure adequate protection of the environment and consequently the health and well-being of human beings. Conserve the vitality and diversity of the natural environment through the conservation of ecological systems and biodiversity. Develop within the carrying capacity of the country through national physical development and planning and sustainable use of, re of renewable resources and conservation of non-renewable resources. Change attitude and practices of citizens with a view to reducing the pollution practices of the public. Ensure that all industries install a certified environmental management system. Empower stakeholders, including communities, to care for their own environments by providing opportunities to share in managing their local resources and the right to participate in decision making. Finally, to promote the integration of principles of environment sustain environmental sustainable development into all national policies and programs. And then we have the Waste Management Act of Trinidad and Tobago, which I'm going to go into in great detail. But this act simply seeks to prevent anyone from breaking the law, governing management of waste and hazardous substances, and imposes a duty of care on those handling waste and other hazardous substances. It issues registration certificates and also deals with the handling and disposal of waste. And at the same time, it authorizes the penalties for those who infringe these regulations. Then we have also the Environmental Impact Assessment Board, which is carried on, with, which, in, which, um, which is responsible for assessing before companies or anyone engages in, in, in the form of mining or exploration, you have to do, as I pointed out, this environmental assessment impact. And companies and ministries are required to carry out the environmental impact assessment before embarking on projects that are likely to have adverse impact on the environment. Under the Petroleum Act, the special regulation for the storage and transportation of crude petroleum, petroleum, and any other dangerous products in certain parts of the country. There is also regulation for the sale, usage, storage, and transportation of crude, and discharging and landing of petroleum products. Ladies and gentlemen, it's quite clear that we in Trinidad and Tobago take the issue of environment protection very, very seriously, and it is the reason why we have not had many instances of oil spills which have been disastrous consequences of the environment. The Environment Management Board and all these acts and regulations seeks to keep Trinidad and Tobago in within the international parameters and guidance in preserving the environment and of course this is consistent with our efforts to see that our oil and gas industry, which is the linchpin of our economy, does not at the same time contribute to a deterioration of our natural environment and concerning the health and well-being of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for your patience.